In this series we'll be creating a programming language from scratch and it's going to be quite small and simple so that we can do it in a few videos. And it will probably be three parts. The first part will be where we look at how the language should look and we'll make a tokenizer. The second part will be the parser and the third part will be the interpreter. So let's get started. I'm going to use Rust. So let's make a new project here. I'll call it small, small lang for small language. And let's first talk a bit about how the language will look. So here's an example program. Basically, it's a language for doing simple arithmetic calculations. And we would also like to uh, be able to see uh, what the calculations uh, result in. So we also have this built-in function print that will simply print the value of a, an expression to a standard out. So that's basically the language. <clears throat> the first part we need to do is to write a tokenizer. Before we do that, we should define what kind of tokens are allowed. So I will make this token type, token type enum. And as we saw in our notes, there are number literals. That's things like uh, 2, 3, 17. Then there are uh, identifiers. That's things like A, B, and C, or uh, a complicated variable name. Uh, then there is equal signs, there's plus signs, minus signs, uh, star for multiplication, there's slash. There's also left parentheses and right parentheses. And I think that covers it. A token itself is a bit more complicated, only slightly. It has a token type and it has a, uh, a lexeme, which is a string. In the lexeme we'll store the part of the source code that gave rise to this token. So for example, if we have the, the token one, two, three, then the lexeme will be the string one, two, three. The tokenizer is essentially a, a function that takes the source code in the form of a string, and it returns a, a list of tokens. The way it works is by scanning through the characters of the source code one by one and then uh, gradually uh, consuming as many characters as it needs to construct the current token. So the way I usually like to do it is to have a position, the current position in the source code, also make a result, which uh, is what we'll return in the end. And then we'll say, while there's still some source, uh, uh, some characters in the source code left, we get the current character and depending on what it is, we'll do different things. So to begin with, let's think about something like an equal sign. An equal sign is quite simple because we know if we see an equal sign, uh, the only thing that's allowed to, it cannot be part of an identifier, it's not a number and so on. So this is actually just a, a, a token in and of itself. And there are a lot of 
uh, tokens that are like that. And here they are. Uh, the equal sign, as we already saw, the division symbol plus minus multiplication and the parentheses. The next thing that uh, that we should try to handle is if we see a number literal. So let's match x if x is a numeric character. Actually, we can do if x is a digit, base 10, then we know we have to pass a a number. We gradually build up the lexeme. And we'll increment the position by one to indicate that we have now used up that character. And then we'll have a sub loop in here. That's why we use a while loop and not a for loop. We we'll have a sub loop that will again take the next character. It will take the next character. If the next character is an empty space, then we're actually done passing this number. Otherwise, if it's a digit, then we want to include it in the number lexeme. So we're going to push that character and If the next character is a closing, parent closing parenthesis, then we're actually also done passing. So we can even put that up here. It's not all I'm doing too much Python lately. But if we see something else, not a space, um, not a space or a new line and not a number not a clothing par closing parentheses parentheses then uh, there's actually probably something wrong so we'll raise an error And then after this loop, we have consumed all the characters that make up the number. So we can now make a token. And then we'll continue here because what we actually forgot to do here when we were matching characters is to consume them in the end. I usually put that there. But then we continue here because we uh, we don't want to consume the last care the next character after the number, which is what this otherwise would do. There's another token type that we should include, which is a new line, because the new line character is kind of Um, delineating statements so maybe it was it's nice to have that the next thing we need in our tokenizer is to uh, to consume anything that's left. So we're gonna assume 
or actually if we have a space we don't do anything we'll just skip all the spaces if we see something that's not a space not a number not one of the predefined symbols we'll assume that it's an identifier for now we don't have any keywords so we'll put everything in here so again we need to construct the substring that makes up this uh, token and we'll have the same kind of structure here so we can go up and copy paste that and if the next character is not alphanumeric then we assume we're done otherwise we will add it to the string we're building up we'll consume that character by incrementing the position by one and then when we're finally done we'll push that token which is an identifier and we will continue for the same reason as before now we can remove that there's no longer anything that's left to do and let's make a small test I'll make some source code here and let's say print a then we'll try to get the tokens by tokenizing the source and then for token and tokens we'll want to print it debug print it most likely but there is a small problem with this, which as you can see, a token does not implement debug. So we need to derive that. And now, now we can try to run it. Cargo run. You'll see there's a bunch of warnings. It's also apparently an infinite loop. So uh, let's try to fix that. The problem is up here when we're consuming a number. We didn't, we've actually forgot to increment the position. So now let's try this again cargo run and now you can see it produced a list of uh, tokens the first one is identifier equal to a next is an equal sign then there's selecting one two three then there's a new line another identifier called print then there's a parenthesis then there's a then there's another parenthesis let's try to make this a little bit more complicated so for example uh, like this even underscore if you run that you will see that it actually it doesn't work because it thinks the underscore is not it's not alphanumeric so it it uh, thinks it's part of the same identifier so actually this check is wrong we would like this to instead check something like is it a digit or is it a space or is it a new line or is it this character of this character so you can see it's quite complicated perhaps it's better if we make a little function called uh, is valid identifier simple or char 
which will take a, a character, turn a boolean, and it will just say, is this alphanumeric or is it an underscore is also allowed. Um, and I think that those are the only ones we're going to allow right now. So let's put that in there. Then we break if this is not the case. Let's try to run it again. And now it correctly constructs uh, the lexeme. Final test. So this is the tokenizer to uh, to reiterate. It goes through as uh, the source code, which is just a string. Also, you can think of it as a stream of characters, and then it emits these token types, which are kind of allowed symbols in the language. Anything that uh, doesn't uh, match this will either get ignored or more likely it will uh, uh, produce a panic. So for example, let's go down here and say, uh, maybe someone tried to do this. So now it just panics and says invalid character. So it will look at the source code and try to produce allowed symbols from that. And later in the next video, when we work on the parser, having the source code put into this kind of structure uh, makes it much easier to write the parser. So I will see you in the next one.